Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Excellency President Ilham Aliyev, Excellency Mrs. Mehraban Aliyeva, Vice President and President of Haider Ali Foundation, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great honor for me to speak at the opening of this auspicious of opening of this uh, forum that has become one of the most successful and influential forums in the world. The Baku process, which started in 2011, and we are at ISESCO very proud to be part of it, has proven to the world that if there is a political will and commitment, success comes. What the world sees right now and live of all these forms of conflicts, hatred, discrimination, inequality, and the different forms of xenophobia that are feeding from heeding and uh, heinous and uh, uh, deviant thoughts and, 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 and forms of, of culture is, is, uh, is, is an example that uh, proves to us that there is no political will by the, those who control at least the, the, the decisions in the United Nations Security Council. I know that many of you do not agree with what is happening right now because wars are increasing, poverty is rising, nationalism is also rising, religious fanaticism is causing the, the atrocities that we have seen in uh, New Zealand, in Sri Lanka, in America, in Europe, in many parts of the world, and also the uh, tendency by the superpowers to fight among themselves and not taking care of, of, of the world peace and security which they are responsible to maintain is also causing this confusing situation that we are living in. So we need the political will by the leaders of the world to make dialogue a success and to make the dialogue achieve its goals and objectives. We cannot fight discrimination, inequality, and violent conflict. And also we cannot fight the, the rise of, 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 of extremism and terrorism that is plaguing the, the, the world without a political will. So there is, the first part of the responsibility lies on the leaders of the superpowers. Let's be sure about that. Number two, our intellectuals and religious leaders have also to come to the reality. We live in a world that is diversified, full of different cultures, religions, uh, languages, races, and this beautiful collection of, 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 of ideas and of thoughts, of, of cultures, of religious uh, d d affiliations, make the world beautiful. Why? We use this to make people hate each other and fight each other. So the responsibility lies on the intellectuals and the religious leaders to educate their people, those who belong to their religions or cultures or, 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 or regions where they live, that we live in one world and that we are one nation. We are all the creation of God and, they, and we came from one origin, the human race. We are not different races coming from different origins. We are one race, the human family. So education is very important. The media has to play its role. The religious speech at the mosques, churches, and synagogues, and temples everywhere, all over the world have also to, to do its job to educate their followers. What we see right now is the opposite. The rise of the rhetoric of, 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 of hatred, of rejecting the other, of fearing from the other. The xenophobia is at its you know, worst, worst part of its, of, of, of its manifestation. In, in Europe, in uh, Asia, in Africa, in the Arab world, in Latin America, everywhere. Now I, I am very worried that another world war will might, erupt, might erupt because of Venezuela. You will see in the few coming days a very big tension 
happening between the United States of America and the Russian Federation over Venezuela. They are not entering in a very meaningful and positive dialogue. They are exchanging accusations and, and blaming each other for, for the problem. This is, this is not the world that we want to live in. We want to live in a world that have peace, security, equality, lack of uh, absence of discrimination, and also a world that is governed by very committed leaders who will lead the nations for a better future. I am not going to praise His Excellency the President, because I love him. But we need leaders like Mr. Ilham Ali. This is, this is a reality. Without, without his will, without his will and commitment, the Baco process would have never been seen and would have never succeeded. So why the other leaders of the world, especially the, 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 the leaders of the superpowers, also give some of their will and their commitment to dialogue? His Excellency, Mr. Muratino, said that. He said, there is a will, but there is no other wills in the other part of the world. They say things, you, you know, beautiful things, but when they, when they leave the platform, you know, they do something else. Despite the reality that we all know that 20% of Azerbaijan land is occupied by Armenia, despite of this violation of the international law and the four resolutions of the Security Council of the United Nations, Azerbaijan is a land of peace, of dialogue, of respecting cultural and religious diversity. Despite of this reality, <laughs> and the world is not helping Azerbaijan. The world is not helping Azerbaijan. They are doing injustice to Azerbaijan. The land that is occupied has to go back to its homeland. <laughs> this, is, this is the way to peace. This is the way for making dialogue successful. Palestine is also has to be solved. The problem there is malignant and it is unaccepted. <laughs> what is happening in Jammu and Kashmir in India, which is occupied by India, is also another problem, another failure of the world, world order. The world order is disintegrating, my dear friends. And we are all responsible for keeping this world order intact. And it cannot be intact unless we have the political will, the commitment to dialogue, and the commitment also to make the world safer and livable for all. The Security Council was created to maintain peace and security. But unfortunately, it is not doing this job right now. I know, his, my, my friend, the foreign minister knows that. You know, because I'm not a, a, a politician. But we, 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 we see that it is failing to do its duty. And we are the ones who are not responsible, are, are the ones who are calling for dialogue and for peace and for coexistence, for respecting the, the culture and religious diversity. But the leaders of the superpowers are not doing that. And even though they do this purposefully, they come to us and say, no, we are maintaining peace and security. They lie to us. They lie to us. It's as simple as that. So I appreciate the efforts that is done by Azerbaijan. And ISESCO has been committed from the beginning with Azerbaijan in this path, path of dialogue, of respect for the components of the world. We are all equal in the sight of God. We have to respect our diversity. We have to respect what the peoples of the world have, have chosen for themselves, their religions, their cultures, their languages, their color of skin, whatever they do, we have to respect that. We have, it is not a tolerance. Tolerance means that we accept them with some grudgeness in our hearts. He is bad, but I accept him. No. We have to accept them with respect. We have to respect them. And we wait for them to respect us. This is the only way to peace and security. This is the only way to make dialogue effective and meaningful, to fight discrimination, inequality, and violent conflicts. And the violent conflicts are the product of the ill-minded thoughts that are fed to the young generations of the world by leaders, of political parties, by religious authorities, and by some fanatics who claim to represent religions, and the religions are not responsible in any way of their deeds and their uh, actions.
Now they brought to us, to the scene, the, 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 the caliph of the so-called Islamic State after five years of, you know, absence. They brought him in the scene. Who is behind him? Baghdadi. Who is behind him? They brought him five years ago to fight in Iraq and Syria and to create this, uh, you know, disasters in, 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 in Iraq and Syria. Millions of people were, were displaced. Hatred is rising between Sunni and Shi. This was never known in our community. And now they brought him again. There is a purpose behind that. I am sure those who made Baghdad in the first place are the same ones who are bringing him right now to create another problem for the Muslim world, to defame the Islamic image, to show the world that Islam is a religion of, of uh, terrorism, of aggression, of hatred, which is not the truth. Islam is a religion of peace, of mercy. Like other religions, there is no religion in the world that calls for killing innocent people or attacking their properties or defaming their integrity. There is no religion that calls for that. The fanatics who claim to, to, to represent the religions are the ones who are calling for that, but not the religions themselves. And terrorism has no religion. So I thank you, Mr. President, and I hope that all of you will go back to your countries and spread the truth that you have, you have seen here in this country and to support Azerbaijan to restore its occupied lands, which are part of this country and will be all the way until God decides part of this country. May peace and prosperity prevails over the world by the grace of Almighty God, and I thank you all for your good listening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.